Hello everybody, peace be with you all, welcome back to NSD TV, in this case NSD Games, as we take a look at God of War, a very fun game that covers sort of the mythological era of Greece, whenever that was, um, the BC era time with the Greek gods and goddesses. It's a series that follows Kratos, the god of war, essentially, who fights for the gods. He's a champion to the gods, and he goes on some wacky adventures. So that's what this gameplay is, if you are completely unaware of what god of war is. That's what it is. So... I've been having an interesting summer. I got to go on a mission trip, which I was very blessed to be a part of. I think it was perhaps the single most eye-opening experience and, as I said, blessing, um, probably the greatest of my life, to get outside myself and serve others. It it helps immensely in every area. To serve alongside other Orthodox Christians was... It, word, words cannot describe it. So, that's what I spent my summer doing. I went to California and saw family. And I spent some time in Colorado. So, those are the highlights of the summer. I am now back home for good for this semester, and I'm looking forward to studying religious studies. Now, if you've watched any other Nessie videos, which if not, I hope you do. If you're brand new, thank you for joining me here. Check those out because you can gain some insight into my beliefs about the world. And I do like to focus on the religious aspects of life on this channel, uh, apart from video games and and archery and other things. I have one archery video now and hope to have more videos talking about archery and the sport uh, that it is, the history and, and so forth. But um, overall, overwhelmingly, my channel is about religion and as sort of an orthodox focus. If you do not know what orthodox orthodoxy is or orthodox Christianity, um, I have videos kind of talking about it. But I hope to make a. I've wanted to make a video for a while now, just explaining it, and its history, and whatnot. But I do have a speech I did. It's called Intro to Orthodoxy. It's on this channel, so check that out if you're brand new. Um, anyway, moving forward, I haven't made a video in a few weeks now. The last one I did was the archery one, but I, in that video I had said I would talk about what's been going on lately, and mostly that's kind of it. Mission, among other things. Um... I have business to take care of in finding a job, um, getting some funds for where I'm going in life. So that's kind of vague, but that's what I'm up to mostly, um, reading and writing and stuff and getting back into the, into focus mode. And, um, Really, this summer has just been me getting outside myself, which is great. Because I really I needed a, a moment, or a long moment, uh, a few moments to see what it is that I, where I'm going. And not so much what I want, because what I want is... 
I, I try to line it up with what is best, what my path is. So, that's what I've been doing this summer. And getting back into the swing of things with making videos and uh, connecting with people, it's, it's, um, it takes a little time to get back into that. And that's where I'm at. So I guess this video is really an update and just showing off some God of War gameplay, fighting some, uh, oh, what they're called, uh, uh, Hydra, which, um, reminds me of politics a lot. Uh, this whole political season has taken such a mental toll on me and others, I know. I'm sick of it, and I am done with it. I vowed probably a week or two ago now while I was on the mission to just not focus on it and it's been nice I don't care the way I see it it's the same coin the two sides in this case you flip it, it doesn't matter what you get it's gonna be the same thing uh, we Orthodox Christians are very adamant on pro-life on the sanctity of marriage actual marriage so the law goes against that entirely, so we we just are stuck with what we got on those matters, and those are the important ones to me. The social aspects, uh, economically, yeah, there there are differences in the two approaches, but has the economy been better with either one party in the past? Not exactly. Uh, I think they say that. I thought I read that Democrats had better uh, economic whatever, but I'm not sure if that's right. Um, no, I can't pick a party either way. They're both hypocritical and untrue. They, they don't have the fullness of of what it means to believe, to be orthodox, to... No, neither have the fullness even if you put the two parties together it'd still not be uh, true to true life as I see it I cannot endorse either one fully I would lean towards the Republican party still and fully on their social um, things although there's a stereotype thought of that they prefer war and whatnot. I do not care for war and the death penalty and everything, but, you know, if, I don't know, if people get to the point where they murder people, others, they've gotten so far down the, the wrong path, I, I don't know if there's, there's always hope for people, but maybe not in this life, if you will. Um... I just see, I look around and see people that aren't willing to change their ways, and yet they they believe they have the right way. I I can say that that's, it's just not true, you know. Christ said he is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, all three things. You have to take that or leave it, you know. You either accept life or you don't. And... Life can feel like fighting this big hydra here. And it is. But when you have Christ, it's it's totally different. So I almost don't have a whole lot of sympathy for people who just blatantly reject the gospel, who blatantly reject the truth. I feel for them, I understand where they're coming from, but as far as condoning their lifestyles, condoning what they think, I can't. So and for that reason, neither party can be mine. 
they both do not represent Christ. One does over the other, but they're still missing a lot of pieces. And yes, the Republican Party is more perhaps composed of traditional Christians or Christians, but they have a ways to go. The Democratic Party is absolutely not Christian. <laughs> Um, I have heard that, well, you hear this a lot, well, what's wrong with, you know, being, doing good, isn't, doesn't that count, you know, they don't believe in Christ, but they do good, isn't that, you know, they strive to do good, isn't that good enough? No, it's not good enough. Uh, I've been reading On Acquisition of the Holy Spirit by Saint Seraphim of Sarov, a tiny book. Uh, chronicling the, the uh, a young man's discussion with the old saint, and it's very profound from the very beginning. Saint Seraphim starts by saying, and I'm paraphrasing, but he starts by saying, y "You know, you seem. It seems that you have have wondered what the true Christian life is. You've wanted it." And you've asked many people, many teachers about it, and they've told you, go to church and do do what is required, and that's your answer. Or they've told you, don't ask such things. They're basically above you. But I will tell you that the goal of the Christian life is acquisition of the Holy Spirit of God. And thus the title of the book. And he goes on to say that good deeds are not enough. You know, good deeds are not, they're not, he says that they're not even good if they're not for Christ's sake. So that really stood out to me. And this is something that I've, I've somewhat felt for years now. It's almost an understanding of what that means without hearing it, but hearing, reading it, from a saint is very profound, very eye-opening still. This idea that, well, this, this truth of that, if you do something good, it doesn't make it good, and it doesn't make you good. You have to do it for Christ's sake, and you have to live the Christian life. So people who do not live the Christian life, they will not attain the Holy Spirit of God, and subsequently they will not gain the kingdom. They will not inherit the kingdom, which is the goal of the Christian life, to acquire the Holy Spirit of God. That's across Christianity, generally the, the idea, well, for the most part. A lot of Christians think it's about getting to heaven, being forgiven of your sins, and that's how you, you're justified into heaven or, or whatever. That's also not the true, the true, the fullness of the faith. And I see time and time again, when I think about these things and look at it, Orthodox Christianity, the Orthodox Church, it has the way, and that is Christ. We must acquire the Holy Spirit of God to acquire the kingdom in the end. And even, even here on earth, just look, look at the saints. They were changed, and that was by acquiring the Holy Spirit of God. So, I can say that neither party has done that. Um, the people in that party, especially the Democratic Party, it's, it, it's, it's kind of sad to say, but they can try all they want. They can say, oh, we're so nice and good to people, we want what's best for minorities and women or whatever they don't they don't they don't really want what's best for women but they they don't show it and they don't have that holy essence they don't have they don't show it and you will know them by their fruits so things like abortion and is a big one um that, that's not becoming of, of the Spirit of God. Uh, frankly put, yes, Christians 
must be pro-life. Um, I think that's that in of itself should be a requirement. Uh, because it wouldn't make sense any other way. It just wouldn't. Much like other social issues. You know, what would Christ want? What would Christ do? What would Christ believe? Maybe that's something to ask ourselves. So, that's my sort of political stance is no. I'm very independent. If I could, I would, I would go as far as to start, and others would, I'm sure, but start an Orthodox party. This is not Europe, though, and we can't legally do that, per se. But, as it stands, there's no party that has Orthodox values under, you know, Christian values in its grasp. And that's sad, but it's the way it is. So, um, I just want to say that the verse is, the verse that backs up um, what St. Seraphim said is, uh, and I will actually go to, just go to find it here. Um, in the book, the Bible, let's do this. Greek interlinear New Testament. Uh, it's in Luke. I really like this Bible because it's Mark, Luke, John. I think it's Luke 15 or so. Maybe not, um, but I'll quote it. I'm, I'm not sure what the numbers are, but um, he says that he, he who does not gather with me scatters, meaning if you don't gather with Christ, you scatter. Um, I guess in reference to harvesting but you be mat you know without a mast basically like a ship and that's the message of this video in every video go to Christ so uh, that's where this video ends and thank you for watching that was a nasty part with the hydra walking into its throat but that's all peace be with you and I will see you in the next video. G goodbye.